opposing gloves here and this is another video in the digital audio basics so today we're talking about sample rate now you've listened to my giant rant on the nyquest theorem and now we're going to talk about this so you'll probably notice when you come in here if we go to audio settings you can change your sample rates right here you can see i go to a pretty high sample rate but I have left it at 44.1 because I simply do not need that high of a sample rate. We're going to talk about what this number means to you. Now, we talked about it should have become quite clear what the sample rate does. It increases our frequency res our frequency response. I keep wanting to say that. It increases our frequency range, our capability of recording higher frequencies. Now, there have been studies done, and so far, none of the ones that I've seen or have, I've been made aware of Hints that anything, so anything above your range of hearing does not affect anything in your range of hearing. That's uh, the conclusion that I am at right now. That's what all the studies show currently. There have been studies with music that have higher frequency content in it and higher frequency content not in it. And they show more neural activity, but no one's been able to differentiate between the two. So that gives us the implication that it does not matter. If you cannot hear it, it does not affect what you can hear. So... Sorry about this thing. So I have a 808 kick uh, in here. And if I zoom in here really, really far, you can see the sample points. Now this is following all the rules. You'll see that here are sample points and this amount of sample points does not mean that like there's some sort of picture like slices of audio being formed. That's not what's happening. Instead, what is happening is it's simply interpolating and we're allowed to represent much higher frequency content. So when we get to smaller nuances it's not a big of a deal so let's go to something with some high content this looks like a good uh, thing and we zoom in on this we'll see we have much smaller movements so in order to represent that higher frequency content we must have more samples so we cap the whole two samples per um, per cycle thing so that and when we interpolate it we get our signal back so that should be fine and dandy whoops so all right, so what's in between these samples? Like, that's pretty much all that you really need to know about sample rate. Most of it's in the Nyquist theorem. So I spent a while, I just tried to really make it clear. Hopefully you got it. So what's the deal? What's going on between these? Is there like a stair step? That's what a lot of people see. You'll see it in books. That's a horrible, horrible, horrible way to think about it. It's not even true. It's not even close to what's going on. What's in the middle? There ain't nothing. There's zero. It's not like that sample holds over until then. It's just nothing. What your A to D converter, what it, what your computer has to do is it interpolates. It does a formula on it. Boop. And it goes boop, 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 boop. This is what it is. Like, that's really, it just interpolates between the two. It says here, here, the, the best way, the frequency in our allowed frequencies that passes through these points is this. And it puts it out there and that's what goes on. So now I'm talking about a flash ADD converter. We actually use um, delta sigma modulate, modulation converters, and we'll talk about that later. That one might not impact you as much. The main takeaways, again, increasing your sample rate doesn't do something magical for you. Now, I'll, I'll save aliasing for another one, but the big thing is in between these points, it's not like there's a stair step. There's just nothing there. And then it interpolates between the two points and gives us our, our wave back. Now, you got to keep in mind that it's also interpolating all the high frequency content that's allowed in our spectrum. It's not like it's not looking at this wave as a whole and saying, oh, this is the frequency. It's looking at the samples. And when our samples are taken at a given rate, it'll spit out the particular value you, we want. If you're mathematically inclined, go check out the theorem. It's uh, really nifty and cool and much more exact than this sort of arbitrary stuff that I'm saying. I don't, I risked simplifying things to where they're incorrect but hopefully you understand and don't walk away with incorrect information so anyways that's our sample sampling rate there's nothing going on in the middle here that's what it's good for that's how it will impact you in your recording career now you will want to record at higher rates for audio manipulation reasons for um well i guess when we talk about higher level different converter types it'll be a lot more clear so i'll save it for them if you have any questions let me know subscribe and have a blessed day